Okay, swing basics. So we will see what swing is, and we'll talk about the concept of container uh, that are in fact top level containers. I will talk about the concept of con con content pane, and uh, we are going to see some programming style using JFrame, JPanel, and content pane together. And we'll talk about layout managers, and uh, then we will see some GUI components and setting look and feel. What is Swing? Swing is Java library. Uh, you can call it framework as well, but it, it is a basically Java library for creating a uh, graphical user interface. Uh, so it's part of the larger, GF, larger JFC, Java Foundation classes, but it replaces an uh, old library called AWT. So nobody's using AWT right now, but uh, in the beginning of Java, uh, there was AWT, and then Swing actually replaced it. Now moving forward, we now have Java now has a Java FX. So Java FX is replacing Swing. Okay? So the role of Swing is going to get diminished as time goes on, while Java FX is the, the technology that is going to be used for building a GUI application on Java platform. So just to let you know. Okay, so Swing applications will use look and feel of the system they are running on, or they can be set by the program. So, you know, if you are running Swing application on Windows platform, it will have Windows look and feel. Uh, if it is running on Mac, it will have Mac's look and feel. So this is nice. So what makes up Swing? So of course, there are Swing components. These are UI components, uh, buttons, text fields, frames, and things like that. These are all Java classes that capture these UI components. Then there are containers. So containers are the containers of UI components. So typically, you have a container like a JPanel onto which you are going to add a few buttons and text fields and things like that. Okay. Then there are layout managers. So layout managers are used to uh, to specify how you want to arrange these UI components in a container. Okay, so you might want to see them in the grid uh, layout manager, right? So you know, so layout basically give you a choice in terms of how you want to have these components to be uh, the uh, layout uh, on the screen, and then. We have event handling. So if someone, if a user actually clicked a button or if a user entered some text and uh, things like that, then there has to be some event handler that captures that event and do something about it. Okay? So every UI component can have event handler associated with it. Okay, so let's move on with the containers. So uh, there are two types of containers, top level containers. So the, uh, these are top level containers are the places for other swing components to paint themselves. So Java provides a three top level containers, JFrame, JDialog, and JAppLet. Okay? So for desktop applications, uh, we are typically dealing with JFrame. Okay? And then there are intermediate containers, and you can, you can call it lightweight containers. And uh, these containers provide simplicity for positioning of atomic components. Uh, and uh, you, can, you can actually apply layout manager typically to these intermediate containers. So JPanel is probably the most popular intermediate containers. And JSplit pane and JTapped pane. So split pane is you have a two split pane. And JTap pane is having a tap. Okay, containers and components. So all GUI components are, all GUI objects are components. Okay? So some are also containers. So, you know, in other words, containers themselves are components. Okay? So JFrame itself is a component. JPanel itself is a component. Okay? So, in fact, they are all subclass of J components. So, there is actually a class, high level class, called the J component, and everything is a class of, a child class of J, J component. Okay? So, the uh, so containers themselves could actually function as a, a component. Okay? And uh, you place other components into these containers. So, J frame could contain J buttons, J text fields, and things like that. And uh, now JPanel represents parts of the window which contains other GUI components. 
Okay, so you can add things directly to JFrame, or you can actually add things to JPanel, and then you can add JPanel to JFrame. Okay, so what do we do with containers? Again, you add components to them, and uh, then you can use Layout Control, Layout Manager, to determine how these UI components will be arranged on the screen. Okay, so later on we are going to see several built-in layout managers you can use. Okay, so let's see how we can use top-level container, it's mostly JFrame. So as I said before, uh, Java provides, Swing provides, three, three, Swing provides three top-level container classes: JFrame, JDialog, and J applet. So J dialog is for dialog, and applet is actually an applet coming from the coming from the web to the browser. Okay, so you know we're gonna mostly focus on J frame, which is used for building desktop Swing application. Okay, so containment hierarchy and container. So to appear on screen, every GUI component must be part of the containment hierarchy. Okay, so you can think of containment hierarchy is basically a tree of components that has the top level container as its root. Okay, and uh, each component can be contained only once. So if a component is already in a container, and then if you try to add it to another container, then component will be removed from the first container and then added to the second. Okay, okay so each top level container has content pane. So this is the another concept. Uh, there is a co concept of content pane. So top level container has content pane and generally speaking uh, you know this is the one that contains a visible components in the top level container GUI. Okay so top level container does have visible part and invisible part and uh, this content pane uh, typically represent is the visible uh, part of that top level container. Okay, now to the top level container, you can optionally add a menu bar. Okay, so this menu bar will be positioned within the top level container, but outside of the content pane. So if you take a look at the picture here, suppose I have J frame uh, that contains. Uh, so suppose yeah, so you know something that I captured on the left is the uh, very simple. Uh, top level container containing uh, the menu bar uh, so we don't have any menu but there is a menu bar and then content pane so if you dissect it to the right then what makes up this whole thing is there is a frame which is a J frame I should say J frame that is the top level container and that top level container J frame is made of two things uh, menu bar and then content pane okay uh, so inside the content pane, you can you, we, basically what we have done is we add a single J label that consumes all the space of the content pane. Okay, so that's what you actually see on the left. Okay, all right. So top level container. So each program that uses the Swing components has at least one top level container. So this again is the uh, root of containment hierarchy. And uh, this hierarchy that contains all of the swing components that appear inside the top level container. Okay, so you know a standalone application with a swing based GUI has at least one <coughs> containment hierarchy. In this case, JFrame is going to be top level container. Uh, now, if this application has, like, let's say, dialogues, okay, then it might have a J dialog as another uh, top level container okay so that's basically this is all about if an application has one main window and two dialogues then the application has three containment hierarchies and thus three top level containers one containment hierarchy has j frame as root and each of the other two has j dialog object as its root okay okay so let's talk about the content pane a bit so you are going to add components to content pane. So you find the content pane of top level container by calling get content get content pane method of the JFrame object. So you're going to call get content pane method of the JFrame object, and then you can add. In this case, you are going to add yellow label using border la border layout manager, okay, uh, with the center. 
and uh, the default content pane is simple intermediate container that inherits from J component and it uses the uh, border layout as a default layout manager okay now when you actually call the uh, get content pane it actually returns J panel object so one of the primary example of the content pane is J panel okay Okay, so how you can customize content pane? So it's easy to customize the content pane. So you can set the layout manager, okay, other than the default layout. I mean, if you don't specify layout manager, then default layout manager, which is the uh, border layout uh, manager, is selected, okay. Uh, and uh, the uh, and however, there is one thing. Yeah, so this is probably not that much important. So I'm gonna just move ahead. Uh, adding a menu bar to the top level container, you can say frame and set menu bar, and then you can provide the menu bar object. Okay, so let's talk about the J panel. So one of the uh, you know example of content that represent that could be actually you know the uh, inserted into content pane is J panel. Okay, so J panel uh, is intermediary con con the uh, container. So J panel class provides general purpose container for containing lightweight components. So by default, panels do not add colors to anything except their own background. However, you can easily add borders to them and otherwise customize their painting. So in many types of look and feel, panels are opaque by default. So opaque. Uh, opaque uh, panels work well as content panes and can help with painting efficiently. So the reason that J panel is actually used as the uh, you know the default uh, content pane is because of this transparency and the, you know it's everything that you are going to add is going to be actually directly visible because J panel is J panel itself is transparent. Okay, uh, it doesn't have any background. Okay. So this is the reason why JPanel is used as a primary content pane of JFrame top level container. Okay. All right. So let's talk about the programming style or programming API. So you could actually uh, write three different programming style like this. And this is actually what I found. I'm actually looking. At, I actually looked various Swing applications, and I found you know they actually use. Uh, different way they actually do different ways of doing uh, coding. So I actually, kind of summarize. I capture the three different styles, and this is actually uh, this is actually what you will find in you know most of the uh, Swing applications out there. First, you create a J panel and add it to the content pane panel. Uh, the content pane. Okay, I should say content pane. So you know, see, you create a J panel, then you set the content pane like that. My frame set content pane uh, with the uh, J J panel, and then uh, the second option is you can create the J panel object, and then you are going to add it to the content uh, pane. Okay, so you know, basically, uh, you get the content pane, and then you can add it. Okay. Uh, and then, yeah, so the second scheme is the most common, and the last scheme is that you can actually, you know, get content pane, and then it actually returns the J component type, but you can actually, you know, the uh, cast it into J panel. Okay, so this is also possible. So, which one to use is actually, uh, you know, programmer's taste. Okay. So again, the the second option is probably the most popular or most common scheme of writing uh, code. Okay, so moving forward, layout manager. So what does layout, layout manager do? It determines the position and size of multiple components within a container. So it governs the layout of these components in the container. So as you will see a different layout manager, you will see what I'm talking about. If no layout manager is used, you will need to position the elements manually. So without using layout manager, it's your responsibility to manage the alignment and everything. And that's a lot more difficult. Okay, so you might want to actually, so you definitely want to use Layout Manager. So, built-in Layout Manager classes. So, Flow Layout Manager, uh, and Border Layout, and Grid Layout, Grid Back Layout, and Card Layout. And the way that you can set the Layout Manager is basically calling Set Layout, and you provide the Layout Manager object. Okay, so let's take a look at each of these Layout Manager. Flow Layout Manager positions the components in the left to right and top to bottom. So it's actually starting from the upper left corner and then you know one 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 and then it goes to the next and things like that. Okay. So this is the uh, Flow Layout Manager. So here, very simple application. So 
uh, you know here uh, I have a flow layout demo project I mean the object here and then I'm going to uh, the as you can see uh, this is a J frame you know it's extension of J frame so I can just create that object inside my main method and uh, and then I'm going to set the uh, you know I'm going to call the set layout method of J frame class and then I provide the flow layout object uh, which is actually right and the 10 by 10 so you know basically if you happen to have a three buttons okay and it will start from here and here and and then it goes like this okay and then it goes like this and this and this something like that okay okay so that is the flow layout manager and uh, so the next one is the border layout manager this is the default okay so you can specify north south and uh, east and west and center so if you specify north it will stretch horizontally south is stretch again stretch horizontally and the east and west is adjust vertically so let's actually take a look at this if you say center then it will adjust in both directions okay so let's see um, let's actually see this example so this is border uh, so we have actually added five buttons uh, to this J frame and uh, then the uh, you know we are basically using uh, the center is center and uh, north button is north and things like that so let's take a look at that so this is what you kind of what you're going to see in in this particular size okay however if you just resize if you resize okay then the center will be actually extending like this okay so that is border layout and uh, grid layout is like a flow layout but positions the components from left to right and top to bottom uh, start the adding components at the left upper le left corner so that's the same as a uh, flow layout but it divides the container into a number of rows and columns and regions are equally sized and ignores the components preferred size so this is so suppose if you have uh, this example but this time you are using grid layout and what you're gonna see is something like this okay so everything is gonna be in fact same size okay and after resizing the size is gonna be the size ratio is gonna be the same okay so this is grid layout manager okay so I mean you can actually see a few other uh, layout managers okay so now let's talk about the uh, swing GUI components so the uh, swing GUI, GUI components like a uh, buttons uh, the uh, they are actually uh, J buttons and J text field and things like that they are all under the package of Java Java X swing and they are entirely written in Java and uh, you can actually also have some interesting components uh, such as the color chooser and option pane these are all provided for you okay uh, so yeah, AWT versus Swing is not probably that much important anymore because nobody's using AWT. Uh, so AWT used to have a button class, and the Swing now have a corresponding version of it called the J button. So everything start with a J that is from Swing. Okay, so you know these are example components. J component is actually root class for all Swing components, and J button, J checkbox, file chooser, text field, frame, J panel, and all that stuff. Okay, applet, J option pane. Yeah, that's something that we have used, right? J option pane. Okay. Uh, setting look and feel. So by specifying fully qualified name of the class for the look and feel. So you know, if you want to look and feel, meta look and meta look, meta look and feel. This is what you're going to see. Okay. Uh, if you actually specify the uh, the uh, uh, you know this this is actually uh, Windows version of it. Okay, so if I say UI manager get system look and feel class name, uh, you know, basically it will check, it will get the, uh, you know, particular platform because I'm running Windows, it's actually getting the Windows version of it. If you're running with a Mac version of it, then it will actually set the Mac look and feel. Okay. All right, so that is the end of the presentation. So I got six minutes. So let me actually explain the hands-on lab documentation. Then I expect you guys to be able to do this hands-on lab yourself. So uh, exercise one is basically uh, various J frame uh, the uh, the application. So let me just show the code. Uh, this is the uh, very simple uh, bare bone J frame uh, application here the code is very simple so I have main class that extends J frame and I create the main object and then I just set the size and set the set visible to true okay 
And next one is I'm actually adding J label to J frame. Okay, so this is what you are going to see. So here we created J frame object. Okay, and I name as the uh, hello world string, and we set the size of it. And uh, then you also actually set set default close operation. So if I click this close this X box, then it will close the application. So you know I set the option of J frame exit on close. Okay. Uh, the uh, and add ubiquitous hello world <laughs> yeah so now we are actually adding J label to the frame and then we actually pack it and we display okay uh, that is that uh, and this one uh, adding J panel to J frame and J panel okay yeah so we are basically adding these things in this case the uh, text and uh, this bar to the J panel and then we are adding J panel to J frame okay so here uh, yeah the print uh, the uh, paint method is basically we paint things so every time you actually resize this uh, every time you resize this this paint method is going to be uh, called to repaint it okay all right so what's important here is that we create a J frame object and uh, then we get the uh, oh okay so here we actually yeah so we have this main class is extension of J, J panel object okay so when we create a uh, main object it creates a J panel object and we are adding J panel object to the J frame okay so this is a case that we are you know the uh, the uh, the uh, we are adding J panel to uh, J frame okay uh, so this is the uh, the same thing, but this time we are adding a few buttons here, okay? And you also have uh, event listeners. So every time you click something, you know it will actually increase the number of button clicks. So let's take a look at this code, okay? Uh, so it's get J panel as J component. So we have uh, two J, yeah. So basically we have a main, uh, okay? So main and it implements the action listener, okay? So now you know this main class should have. Uh, the uh, the uh, the method action performed method implementation so this one so this is event handler okay uh, so it's basically you know the increasing increasing the number of clicks okay now the uh, this code uh, here we have get J panel as uh, J component uh, that is actually being called in the main method I assume so in the main method yeah we're actually calling create uh, schedule a job for event dispatching thread and uh, oh okay yeah so this is actually running runnable code right yeah so you're actually running in a separate thread okay so it calls the create and show UI and that is this and inside of it is calling uh, the get uh, get J panel as uh, J component that is this 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 method okay this this method so it basically created two J button components okay and uh, then we create the J panel uh, and uh, when we create a J panel we specify the uh, uh, the uh, layout manager so we are using grid layout here and then the uh, we are adding a button uh, these two buttons are being added to J panel and uh, then we also added the label and then we also set the border and uh, so you know this is basically returning uh, J panel object as J component okay so here basically what we have done is that we get the J panel object as a type of J component and then we are adding that J, J component which is a J panel object to J uh, we are adding it to a frame okay frame object all right, so and this one is add J panel to J frame. Uh, so here, uh, basically, we have a J frame object, and then we have a J panel object, and uh, then we are going to add widgets. So we are going to call add widgets as J panel. So this is the one. Okay. All right, so I'm going to actually ask you guys to you know look at the code yourself. Uh, so exercise two is J frame and content pane. So here I'm actually uh, the uh, J panel to content pane, and yeah, okay, yes, yeah. So this is the uh, this is the example that I actually captured uh, in 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 the slide. Okay, so I'm going to actually ask you guys to take a look at that as well. And exercise three is a layout manager, so you can actually try a different layout manager. Okay, so that is uh, the border layout, which is a default, and this is the uh, uh, border layout on content pane. 
okay and this one is uh, I'm gonna just to show the picture yeah floor layout and this one is floor layout on J panel okay so you can use a layout manager on J panel or J frame uh, okay and this one is a uh, grid layout okay and this one is a grid layout on J panel okay and uh, let's see and the last one is learning by example so you can actually run this application and uh, you can just take a look at the source code okay alright so I apologize that I have to rush a little bit because we are getting to uh, close to five so let me just uh, finish the recording uh,